All right, guys, we are live. Hopefully, you can see us in the right orientation right now. Uh, this is Erica. What's up, guys? You guys may recognize her. Years ago, we did a fun video together. We made zoodles, right? Yeah, that was a long time ago. Uh, but I think next week, we have our video coming out for cauliflower crust pizza and uh, homemade yep. pizza crust, right? Yeah. So that'll be next week. But uh, we're going to hang out tonight and make my favorite recipe from the cookbook live. Uh, Desi's working on this weekend's video right now. Everyone say hi to Dan. He's a uh, man in the camera right there. That is Erica's better half. There we go. There yeah. we go. Boom. Uh, there you go. You're nice. Oh, yeah. That is Dan, and uh, we've had dinner together now, I think, almost every week the last few yeah, weeks, Yeah, sometimes right? twice a week. Sometimes <laughs> twice a week, you never know. Um, so we're gonna make this, you guys. So this is my favorite recipe from the new cookbook. It's the Moroccan chicken stew with low-carb golden cauliflower rice. Let's get in there a little yeah, bit. Get in there, Dano. Uh, Cause you guys always ask me, oh, yeah. what's my favorite recipe? And it's kind of like choosing a child, uh, which I don't have yet, but I will have in three weeks. <laughs> So in the meantime, this is my favorite recipe. And by the way, thank you, Erica. Now for a month straight, the book has still been a number one bestseller on Amazon. Not surprised. Yes. It's amazing. Yes. I cook from it at least once or twice a week. That's right. If you follow uh, everything Erica on Instagram, she cooks from this. Dan, actually, that's the biggest testament. I know. Dan is not a good cook at all. He made uh, the... Uh, Fennel spiced chicken with creamy mash, and he made the red lobster cheddar bay biscuits, right? They were awesome. Robert Grimes is saying the book is rocking his kids' lifestyle. Yeah, Robert. He's really happy. That's right, you guys. And Thank Jesse you so much. Said best cookbook ever. Thank Dude, you so much. Art is also in the house, so a Art. lot of pressure. I can't oh. be I can't be wiggling nice. the camera. I gotta keep a steady hand or so Art's gonna blow nice. me up. Nice. Everyone say hi to Art. He's not over today. He, we filmed videos the last two days, but it just shows you that Art wasn't here and we went live and I couldn't even get the camera straight. So Art is. He's a vital. <laughs> he's a vital, vital, vital cog in the machine. Uh, you guys, before we start, leave a comment down below. Let us know where you're watching from. Let us know what you're making for dinner. And I put the cookbook link down below too. I know many of you guys watching have bought the book, so thank you. If you know someone else who needs the book in their life, send them the link or more importantly share the live stream right now yeah. to your instagram stories your facebook your instagram page get more people over here so we can show them low carb doesn't mean low flavor right love it all right so let's do it um hopefully it's going to look as good as this in the cookbook the recipe starts erica with boneless skinless chicken thighs all right, let's um there. you're a thigh fan aren't you i love chicken thighs i'm intimidated by them because i don't cook with them often oh. i've recently started cooking with them more because of you oh very nice i've always been a breast girl okay <laughs> i've always been a breast man in many regards in my life but it's funny to say intimidated because it's actually more forgiving than chicken breast is it really There's way more fat so it's harder to overcook it. Chicken breast, you have to like nail, nail to it to the second, right? And if, we have a lot of techniques in the book, but I think chicken thighs are a little more forgiving. So Erica, can you scoop, obviously, trivia number one, what is this spice gonna be the main spice of the rub? If we had Smell-O-Vision, maybe a Marlene or Janice or Maggie can smell it, but since you all know me very well, and Erica obviously knows the question and answer, what spice is so vital to this that Erica's gonna put maybe about a teaspoon in there? Then we'll go in with some cumin. So I've never been to Morocco. Yeah. Have you been to Morocco, Kara, Erica? I've never been to Morocco. I've never. But in my mind, this is like... This is one, what you get This there. is what you get there, right? I don't know if it's true. I've actually heard that it kind of is. But uh, how about a teaspoon of coriander? Nice. It kind of has those Middle Eastern flavors. And then what's really cool about it, you guys, is that it has two dessert spices. So it has cinnamon and cloves. And I like to sneak these into savory recipes, Erica. Because it's one of those things that make you go, mm, right? That? Exactly. I can't figure that out. But got, not too much. We got a lot of smoked paprika calls yes, going thank on. Yes, Y'all got, got it. Y'all got it right. So imagine that. We got smoky paprika. We have a little bit of that desserty cinnamon and cloves. We have floral cumin, coriander. It's a really nice spice rub that packs a ton of flavor. You know what's interesting about coriander? So this is the seed that cilantro. Yeah. And I can I love coriander, can't do cilantro. So if you're not a cilantro fan, right. coriander does not have the same effect. That's right. Erica is one of the 30% 30 30 of people who think that it tastes like soap. It's not even you think, it's genetically, it does. Yeah. yeah, it does taste it's, like Yeah, it's not like, you know, she is weird. It's like, no. I prefer yes. it didn't. Yes. Yeah, let us know in the comments if you're one of that yes. 30%. If I thought it was 15, but you said 30. So 30. 30 is a lot of people, yeah. one out of three people. If you want a room of 10 people, <laughs> three of them will have the cilantro. Exactly. Version. So smell that, you guys. Get your nose in there, Dan. Now, Mickey, Jean, Art, get in there, Art. Isn't that nice? It's just so lovely. And we're just going to season this with that. And let's get a little bit of salt here. 
So Erica, can you pinch over a generous amount of uh, real salt? Yes, yes, I love this salt. Yes. Did they send you any yet? They, it's on the way. Nice. It's in route. Redmond, baby. Er Erica's now a believer in the raw, unrefined I, real I, salt. I drink the Bobby Kool-Aid <laughs> when it comes to a lot of this stuff. My Kool-Aid is tasty and everyone should drink it. And it's clean and organic. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> it is. Free. Um, if you haven't seen the video, after we're done, search Flav City Salt. And we have a whole video about the kind of salt you want to use and the kind you want to avoid and how to use them. Uh, and unfortunately, iodized table salt and even kosher salt, Erica, like oh. this stuff, you guys. This Which stuff was is, sitting in my counter for yeah, the last like Yeah, I actually, years. I used this thinking it was less refined and processed. It actually turns out it's pretty much just as processed as table salt. Um, they bleach it to re remove all the impurities. And then sometimes they add anti-caking agents, which are not good for you. Um, and then I get a lot of questions about, what about iodine? How am I gonna get my iodine fixed because table salt has iodine? Um, and my go-to answer always is a good diet of seafood and leafy greens. Uh, but I did some research and Redmond told me that their salt actually has natural iodine. And oh. even though you guys, it's way less than iodized table salt, your body ingests it and processes it way better. Interesting. So sometimes less is more. So you don't even need it. Exactly. So Erica, my hands are all schmaltzy. Can you do more spice schmaltzy. rub? Schmaltzy. Yeah. <laughs> That's a little telling about where you're from. <laughs> That's right. Sometimes I do that and people are like, oh. Gotcha. gotcha. Guess who you are now. Now, question for you guys watching. I want to sear these in this really beautiful hot cast iron pan behind me. Do you want these thighs to be cold from the fridge? Or do you maybe want to let them sit for 20 minutes so they get to room temperature? What do you think and why? In the meantime, keep leaving comments down below. Let us know where you're watching from. We got Jackie's here. We got Olinda. She loves cilantro, but she knows a lot of people who don't just like Erica. North Carolina is in the house. Uh, Sherry says room temperature. Maggie says, uh, what salt do I recommend? Redmond Real Salt, Maggie. Uh, let's see, Tex is in the house. Sit, 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 exactly. Erica, why don't we cook? So uh, it's going to cook really unevenly. If you put a cold piece of chicken in the pan, it's going to be very uneven. And your best bet is to let it come to room temperature. Get a nice even sear. Yep. Perfect. Exactly right. So ideal world, Erica and I would let that sit for 20 minutes and let the salt pull moisture to the surface and then get a little happy happy with that spices and then go back into the meat. We don't have 20 minutes, but that being said, the chicken is room temperature. Yeah, right? I took it out. It. So I'm just going to set that aside. We're preheating. Look at this, Dan. This is a beautiful, let's come back here. This is a Marquette casting, Michigan made cast iron pan. It's beautiful, it conducts the heat so nice. They were nice enough to send me one. I don't know what happened. I, yeah, what's up with you? You know, uh, I think I cooked yeah. something in here and it like took a layer of the flax oil off. And I actually asked them, they said like, it's unusual, but I can re-season it with more yeah, oil. Yeah, I like it though. It shows it's yeah, been used. Yeah, exactly. It's actually being used. We're cooking. I bet you, I bet you, I've known you well enough that I bet you cooked something on like Tuesday and you didn't clean that until like no. Friday. Now, Dan, <laughs> things get clean at the end of the day around here. Dan comes over for dinner and I have a, a pile of dirty dishes. How are we doing tonight? Are we doing all right? I actually cleaned just I mean, for you guys. That's pretty, yes. that's pretty good. Thank you for showing my dirty sink. We usually, we usually get breakfast, lunch, and dinner dishes at this house when we come over that's right yeah and then you help clean it <laughs> um and then erica let's start chopping some veggies can up. you chop an onion and got it how do we want this chopped? let's do a fine dice on the whole thing okay. oh yeah and then we're so gonna, we're gonna use half of the onion for the chicken stew for the cauliflower rice what a treat double chop that's action right here this is intense this is a duo you guys want the key the uh what do you got the zucchini there yeah we got organic zucchini all right, you guys want the zucchini or you want the onion zoom in? Uh, we will leave that up to you. I'm, I'm letting them decide. Yeah, I'm, I'm letting the crew decide. Yeah, the fan can decide. Now, look at this picture. We use the zucchini in the chicken stew. We first really get those nice and crusty, and we cook them, you guys, in vegetables, olives, onions, roasted peppers, chilies, and lemons. Super duper flavor going in there. Then we cook the cauliflower rice with turmeric, onions, ginger, garlic, coconut flakes, unsweetened, of course. Uh, herbs, zest, and nuts. Insane flavor. So I think this, Erica, is one of those recipes that really busts that myth of like, hey, if you're gonna eat low carb keto or weight loss food, it's gonna be bland. Because this is a party in your mouth, literally. And it's also one of the uh, first keto recipes I ever shared with people and they loved it. So I have to put it in the cookbook. So we're gonna cut this down here. First, we sear the chicken thighs. And then we cook the vegetables. We get the chicken back in the pan. 
and we let it go anywhere from 30 to 40 minutes. We're going to do a little quicker tonight because we want to get done and get this food in our belly. And that'll give us a time to make that cauliflower rice while it's cooking. Oh, this one's going to be, uh, this one's going straight to Dan's mouth. Okay. It's washed and clean, Dano. You don't worry about that. Oh, yeah, I didn't ask before I ate it. <laughs> uh, we'll do some avocado oil back here, Dan. We'll we, check it we out. We want to sear the chicken thighs, and we want to do it in a high heat. It doesn't really have too much flavor, so avocado oil fits that bill perfectly. So swirl it around the pan, but it's a little slow to warm up. So nothing really sears quite like it, but because it's a very dense metal, it does take an extra couple minutes. So I always say, let it preheat for three minutes. Put the oil in, wait another 30 to 60 seconds. Once it starts to shimmy or like smoke, then it's ready to go. So it's not quite there yet. What's our, what's our heat level? Our heat levels are honestly just above medium high. Just with medium, so just like that, yeah. I'm a visual person. That's that, very good. All very right. good. So let's give that one more second and then uh oh, the audio keeps messing up, someone's saying. Interesting. Anyone else having the audio issue? All right, let's look at yes. nice. Let's see here. I still remember my first time tasting cilantro, and yes, it tastes like so. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, Gail says, What is the cookbook? So, if you guys haven't seen it yet, this is why we do the live streams. Just to remind oh. you all, it's called Keto Come Meal Prep by Flav City. It's available in almost every country in the world. Just search Amazon on your local browser. It's got 125 low carb recipes that actually taste good. They're approachable recipes for everyone. And probably more important, every single recipe has a photo. Every single recipe tells you if it's a meal prep, dairy free, is it egg free, is it nut free? This one's not. This one's Whole30, this one's Paleo. And the most important, I busted my butt and broke down the macros for every single part of the recipe. The chicken, the cauliflower rice, if there was a sauce, I did that too. So we really thought of everything. So spread the love, share the love. If you bought a copy, thank you. Maybe there's someone else in your life who wants one too. You gotta make that a number one bestseller. We're a number one new release, but I think we can do bestseller, Oh, 100%, right? and what I love, when you broke down the macros, so I do Weight Watchers, yes. and I put the macros right in, it tells me exactly how many points your meals are. I love that. Which is awesome for right. me. I don't have to guess, I don't have to put ingredients well, well, in. wait for us. Down. How does that work with the Weight Watchers app? So you literally just put mm. in like the calories, the fat, the carbs, all of that, and okay. it calculates point value. So what if you don't have the, the macros broken down for you already? It's tough, really? just so you have to make your best guess. Interesting. Yeah, so, but if you're following a recipe, I mean, it'll tell you like how many points each thing is, and you can easily do it, but you don't have to. Okay. okay, interesting. So, let's put a splatter guard down there. Yeah, no, because I don't want to be cleaning that. My stove top and that oil stays contained. Oh, bye bye chicken. <laughs> we'll see you later. So I think that was probably one of the hardest things about the cookbook. The macros took forever. But a lot of people go to a site called like MyFitnessPal. Yep. It's not accurate. See, you have to go to four, or I go to four different sites and I list them in the book. One's called Fat Secret, one's called Nutritionix, one's called uh, MyFitnessPal, and the other one I can't remember now. But a lot of times they're inaccurate. Yeah. So you have to double and triple check and it creates so much work, but it's very important to yeah. know how many net carbs, how many total carbs, how totally. much fat. It can make or break any exactly. your whole diet. So we did that. So let's read what else goes in here. So remember, every single recipe has the macros in here for you. Uh, okay, so we're gonna brown that off. We're gonna put the onion, zucchini. Can you chop three cloves of garlic? Sure can. And then I'll chop another three. We'll use those for the rice. So a lot of the ingredients you'll see in the book also, are double used. So we use them for the main and for the side dish because we don't want you like buying a ton of ingredients and having a chop and prep forever. But at the same time, when you see a recipe or a photo like that, you're like, damn, like that is sexy. Like sexy grub to look at, sexy grub to eat. You get a bench scraper. And the reason why we actually take the time to brown that chicken off is that it just adds a ton of flavor. If we just added the chicken in there with the vegetables, you're gonna miss out on the caramelization. And it does take a little more work, but it's totally worth it. Let me make some room here for you. This video needs more likes, just saying. <laughs> I Pops. love that comment. I agree, but hey, share this link. Take the link right now, paste it over to your Facebook page, paste it over to your Instagram page, and make sure when you're done, you hang out and follow everything Erica. We call her the air fryer queen. She makes really indulgent recipes that are healthy 
And a lot of times we're over there hanging out. She's over here hanging out. We're going to do an epic giveaway yes, in the near future with Dan and Desi. It's going to be like, imagine this countertop. But full. But full of an instant pot. Everything you need to be like a successful home cook. Yeah, it's going to be insane. Dude, you brought some egg rolls over here. I did. Give the oh, people, right. give the the give the people a the sneak peek. Yeah, a little sneak peek. That's when you know you got a problem is when you go over and you cook dinner Those for are them. Free egg rolls too. Uh, they're, so they get cool. they're really crispy too. They're super yummy. So uh, SH has a good question. He's saying it's a huge cutting board. Do you use it for meat and other stuff? So I never put meat on wood because unless you wash it immediately with hot soapy water, the bacteria can breathe into the wood. Instead, I use this. The one I just put the chicken on, right? The best oh. cutting board. I actually just put that on my story today. It's the best cutting board in the world. Yeah, it's like literally $9. Yep. And this is something that raw meat can't infect, but it can when it's on wood. This is an 18 by 24 double thick booze block. Cherry wood, it's amazing. It weighs like a ton, but I love it. Love it. I think it's really important to have a big one because don't you hate when you're chopping on a small board and things start falling oh, everywhere? It's the worst. You're chasing it on the counter, on the floor. More so real estate is better. Uh, yeah, we'll do three for the chicken and three for the rice. You just shared a video too on uh, how to keep it keep it moist, right? Uh, yeah, what I did a story this weekend. So every month, as soon as my board starts to look a little dry, I take mineral oil. They use that for constipation. I use it for my wooden boards. You put it on a rag or even a paper towel and just rub it on both sides and let it dry and it's good to go. So we got some good veggies here. Yeah, so... Zucchini, onion, some garlic going. Mm -hmm. How's our chicken doing back there? I. I think it needs another minute, Dano, but another thank you minute. for reminding me. All right. I just want to give the people another view of that. <laughs> I like the way Dan's doing here. Great here. Guys. Art's got some uh, competition here. Art! You know what? Art, let's I go. I don't know that they come better than Art. It, well, that's, I I'll, gotta be honest. I'm just being nice to Dan, to be honest. Oh. <laughs> All right, here, you guys can look at the floor for a little bit now. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm joking, Dan, I'm joking. <laughs> so, Art and I and Paul went to a farm yesterday. I Dundee, saw Illinois. that. That we, was pretty cool. It was cool. So this weekend we have two awesome videos coming out. We have the cereal review video at the grocery store, which cereals to buy, which ones to avoid. It's really eye-opening. And the good news is there's a lot of cereals out there that are good for you. Uh, not low carb, but good for you. And then we went to a grass-fed beef oh, and chicken farm. The and star. <laughs> and we tell you why it's so important to eat uh, pasture-raised chicken and chicken eggs we showed you how they're farmed, talked to the farmer, and got some really, really cool info. So this weekend, cereal and pasture-raised chicken is coming at you. It's going to be really cool. I saw the farm look awesome. Oh, dude, the farm was legit. And now we're outside of uh, Chicago. It's called All Grass Amazing. Farms. I had raw milk. I, I saw that. I saw that. So good? good. You oh. said don't believe the hype on raw milk's not good for you. Yeah, it's very good for you. If it's stored improperly, then it's bad. It's bad. Yeah, I'll get back here. Let's do it. Oh my god. So usually when it starts to get white and opaque around the top, that means it's mm -hmm. time to flip. And that's what you want. See how the slice is seared into the chicken perfectly? Stunner. Stunner, right? And what do you put in there? Do you put a little olive oil? Uh, avocado. Avocado. Yeah. So that's it. When you look at Morocco, I think that's the picture they have. That's right. On you look at Morocco, there's two <laughs> white people like me and Erica <laughs> making <and> chicken. <laughs> Nothing says in Morocco like two people who have never been there and are white as can be. <laughs> um, but yeah, really, really cool. So like, because when you see chickens who are free roaming and like eating the bugs and the worms versus 30,000 in a hen house that never go outside and there's poop flying everywhere, like, which ones do you want to eat? Right. Yeah, they I chop their beaks off so they don't peck yes. each other. Yeah, it's they like get horrible. aggressive in that environment so they chop their beaks off. It's terrible. It's terrible. Um, e. Call Hill asked the name of my channel. I'm not on YouTube. I'm on Instagram at everything Eric. Type it in there. See. Oh, there yeah. you go. Uh, we got 288. Yo, guys, what's going on here? Share the link right now to your Instagram stories, to your Facebook page. Our record is 470. We're making new recipes from the cookbook, Keto Meal Prep by Flav City. Number one new release on Amazon, all because of you. But here's the cool thing, Dan. I call it the flippability factor. You pick up this book, and it has a flippability factor of 9.9 .9 out of 10. <laughs> <laughs> the, the Russian judge, he dinged me. But look at that. Every single recipe has a photo, and it's like, wow, I can eat that on keto. I can eat that on keto. Yeah. I had no idea. Oh my God. Oh my God. So, I mean, that's what you can expect in this book. Oh, um, by the way. Yes. 
had his cloud bread yesterday. He oh, came, I dropped it off. That's right. So he came over. He actually, we, we filmed, I have a podcast. He was on it. And as a little gift, which was so sweet, he brought me some cloud bread. Mostly because I've been bugging him yeah, for yeah. four months. <laughs> Guys, the cloud bread is a game changer. I made a BLT on it. Ooh, nice. It's Did literally like funny. Yeah, I have a picture. I'll okay, I want to see that later. Okay. Dude, yeah. back to your flippability comment. Yes. Dude, I, I've been making, you know, an entree, and then sometimes I'll switch out the side, so I'll flip to another page, just bounce back and forth. You yeah. can kind of cook however you want, right? Exactly. So, like, even though it's meal prep and this comes with cauliflower rice, if you see a side dish from another recipe, swap oh, it, good. right? There's literally endless combinations. It smells so good in here. It smells great. Um, but that cloud bread, uh, we have a video coming out next week uh, where we made uh, double cheeseburger smash burgers. Done. Yeah, that's coming out next week with Aldi. Um, but I think the key to that, because a lot of people told me in the past it gets slimy when they store it in the fridge, you actually have to store it overnight on the counter so it dries out slightly, then transfer it to the gotcha. fridge in a bag. But like, they're so good. They're so oh, good. Oh, yeah, we crushed them uh, yesterday like a boss. I actually toasted mine up a little Ooh, bit. Ooh, that's nice. It was nice. I like that it a lot. It was real nice. Okay, guys, so as soon as that chicken comes out, Eric and I are going to go in with the onion, zucchini, dry thyme, uh, then we'll throw some garlic in. We have some roasted peppers on the side. We have some good olives over there. And Erica, can you slice the lemon here? Yeah. Uh, we're gonna put the lemon in there so it infuses the broth with a nice kind of lemony sour flavor. And we'll finally chop our red chili too for a little bit of spice. So we're and, we're keeping, uh, our, keeping our peel on for the lemon? Yeah. Uh, yes, we are. Absolutely. A lot of right. flavor. Just, Absolutely. Just making sure. And then we'll get going with the cauliflower rice. I'll start preheating that pan. So this recipe is a meal prep. It makes, I mean, five servings for the week. Wouldn't you, Dan, want to eat that five days in a row for lunch? Six. <laughs> seven. No, no. Dan works a lot. Yeah, that's right. I double the recipe, Dan. You got <laughs> ten meals right there. Um, good. Now I think the chicken can come out. All right. So Let us be the judge of that. That's right. You guys be the judge. Okay. What do we think, guys? Is that ready? Well, no, it's still raw in the middle, but it has nice color. All right. Because we actually don't want to fully cook it now. We want to finish cooking it in the, in the liquid, in the so sauce. There's a yeah, love sense. fest happening right now. Everyone's sharing their social handles and everyone's following everyone. Are you serious? Yeah. Oh, it's so cool. It's so cool. We've never had that happen before. I know, I love it. Now, Dan, look, the beauty of browning is we get oh, all yeah. of that sticky bits in there infused in the fat. So when Eric and I go back now, I'm going to pick up half of the onions and the zucchini. Mm. They cook in the sticky bits. Erica, can you put another shot of the avocado oil there? In the Sticky box? bits is a technical term, right? Yeah. Learned, yeah. At, learned at culinary art school? It is. Well, the technical term is fond, but we call sticky bits around here. <laughs> and then how about a pinch of salt in there, Erica? Where do you put that? That's uh, where'd I put it? Oh, it's still out there on the counter. So if you skip that browning stuff on the process, then, you know, poo poo on you because you're not getting all that flavor now into your vegetation. And then we'll take oh, this, yeah. and then let's let's crowdsource this. Maybe a Maggie or store hen. Help Dan and be Dan's hand. All right, here. yep. And here you go. For him. Well, we gotta get my hand out. Yeah, Maggie, dive in very closely there. If you need help, maybe Bobby or uh, Diana can help too. And then we'll put a little pepper boy in there. Good job, guys. Wow. Crushing like a boss. And then, we can get started on the cauliflower rice. Lost one bad boy here. Hey. Happens to the best one, guys. No zucchini left behind, though, in this house. Now, I think, Erica, do you think for the cauliflower rice, we should use ghee? Yeah. How's that sound? All right. Got some ghee out of the pantry. Thank you, guys. Oh, damn, the spoon rest is right here. Dude, I just wanted to make sure I didn't put it on the chicken. I thought I was doing, I thought I was doing good over yeah. here. The Luck Crusade spoon rest right here. Not add. <laughs> so Erica's going to put a generous spoonful of organic grass-fed ghee in there. Oh, yeah, spoon that in there. Just to mix it up. Why not? Um, and also, ghee is really, really important, you guys, for pregnant mom. Super healthy fat, and it's very good for postpartum, too. So Desi is going to crush ghee like nobody's business as soon as that baby comes out in a few weeks. Um, and now, let's get the base of uh, this down. We'll put some onions in here. This is actually, it's a superfood meal prep recipe because we're using ghee and we're using turmeric. 
Turmeric is no joke, you guys. It's there. You know what? Turmeric's really good. If you have any sort of inflammation. Yep. Exactly. Shot of turmeric, add a little turmeric to your dish. It helps so much. Exactly. All right, what we got for heat on this bad boy, too? Yeah. How are we doing? We got almost full blast to get oh, started. Yeah. We're going hard. I'll go medium low. So turmeric, I mean, it's not just something you find in the hipster coffee shops. Anti-inflammatory, anti-carcinogen. And if you just have, if you feel achy and like inflammation, like a lot of people do, it'll bring it down. Yeah. It'll bring it down. So that, the kind of diet for the keto is very non-inflammatory because you're getting rid of starches, gluten, and anything that really causes inflammation. Yeah, so. whenever I go like out to dinner, if I go order Chinese, something like that, every once in a while it happens. The next day I have like a turmeric shot. Yes. I like, my face de-swells, it's like amazing. Totally, so for this recipe we're gonna use dried turmeric, but let me just show you. I always have fresh turmeric in the kitchen. It kind of looks like ginger. Definitely. Yeah. Um, and you could use fresh for this. Just be careful because this is very, very orange in color and it will dye anything it touches. So if you actually do this on wood, it's gonna stain it. So I have a dun, turmeric dun, only dun. board. Dude, that is insane. That. <laughs> so amazing. I don't do any other you know, surfaces for turmeric because it's really, really bad. One time I was sitting on the carpet. Uh, oh. This was probably a month ago. And I was drinking it like I do all winter long and I knocked it and it spilled and like I didn't get all the yellow out. I was so mad. I was like, oh no, dude. <laughs> new carpet or did you salvage it? Uh, uh, no, it actually was a semi-new carpet already so it hurt extra, extra hard. Oh man, I'm going to go search for that stain once we're done with this. <laughs> yeah, look for that on Dan's Instagram story. <laughs> um, they want to know what ghee is good. I'll show them this. Story. Yes. Yeah. So we always talk about that shit. From Thrive Market. We love that ghee. And if you do thrivemarket.com slash city, you get 25% off your first order. Dude, the ghee is starting to compete with the uh, Moroccan vegetables and chicken for, right. the, for the main smell of the room right now. It's smelling good, man. It's smelling like a Marrakesh, the market, like a souk right now. All we need is like someone selling spices by the mound. Oh. Yeah, we're looking good. All right, so yeah, we're doing really good. Here's the cauliflower rice. All right. And Erica's going to tell you why before we started as opposed to store-bought. So if you're gonna go to a store-bought cauliflower rice, first of all, if you get the frozen one, it's gonna have way too much liquid in it. And I've learned from Bobby just because I used to make cauliflower rice with frozen cauliflower and it just was not nearly as good. It just never got the texture right. It's mm -hmm. kind of mushy and gross. So always grate it fresh yourself. Exactly right. What are you doing over there? Chopping chilies with those? This would be chopping chilies for the stew. All right. And then I'm going to get a red pepper and just cut that into strips and let that stew in the pot with the chicken. The only time we use cauliflower frozen rice is pizza. pizza. So think about it. Erica said water and mushy and squishy. You actually want that when you make pizza. When you pizza. make a pizza, yeah. but not in your rice. No, so if you want to fool someone into eating cauliflower rice, it has to be fresh. Because it actually has that like al dente or like fluffy rice feeling. But if you want to make a killer cauliflower rice pizza, you have to squeeze as much moisture out of here as possible. And when it's frozen, it's already mushy as can be. Yeah. So you can really get all the water out. You can't do that with fresh, yeah. it's impossible. So funny, because I always made my cauliflower crust pizza with the fresh cauliflower and my rice with the frozen. Oh, really? And funny. neither really came out totally right. That's so why. You learned something. That's right, yeah, exactly. So we fooled a lot of people into thinking they're eating rice, but yeah. they're actually eating cauliflower. So this is good, Dan, look at this. The veggies are Those garlic there. No, guys, why did I wait? I mean, Eric was about to dump in three cloves of garlic in here, and it's kind of like, yo, why don't you just dump them in with the zucchini and the onions? Why did we wait a good seven minutes first? I don't, I don't know. Maybe you guys no, know. No, why do you think? <laughs> I'm doing my best to play stupid. I, I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe uh, you guys know. No, you just put the garlic in. <laughs> Sound like Rocky? That's right. Oh, hey, oh, Pedro, you got to go to Pedro. Pedro. <laughs> So, I mean, the reason why is you don't want the garlic to burn. And it's crazy because a lot of recipes call to add the garlic right away. Yes. And when I see that, I'm like, this person doesn't know what they're doing. Exactly. It's a great way to see if someone's a faker or not. Yep. All right. Exactly. Throw a little more salt in there. Oh, that's time. time. Dry oh, time. time. Got it. Dry time. Dry time. That's a little different. Yeah, a little different. All right. Uh, let's see here. I wasn't prepped on what we were throwing in. He went rogue on us. Not everyone's got it right. Bobby, Danny says because it doesn't burn. Very good. Nice. Mm. Let's see here. Oh, yeah. 
Pennsylvania in the house. We got 306 people. You guys, if you haven't done so yet, you take this link right at the top. You paste it into your Instagram stories. You paste it into your Facebook page. You get a party over here because Eric and I are crushing keto recipes with Dan, her husband. Big round of applause for him. Desi's working on this weekend's video right now, crushing it like a boss. This is what we do, you guys, here. We don't stop. Erica and I do this for a living. Literally all seven day, days a week, every day. All day, every day. This is what we do, and we love it. I, there's nothing I'd rather do. I was telling Bobby for the last three days, I've been sitting just stewing over these gluten free egg rolls that I've been exactly. working on. Exactly. I spent all day perfecting the recipe because exactly. I couldn't stop thinking about it. All right, Dana, we're going to go back in with the chicken. Erica, can you. Is there any more garlic for that? Uh, yeah. We're going to go Bobby, back with the chicken. Chili. Yeah, I think so. All right, quick question for you, Bobby. Yes, tell me, man. Do you have a cookbook within five feet of you at all times? Because we got one over there. <laughs> uh, we yes. got another one over there. I can show you the one by my nightstand, too. <laughs> if I wake up ever scared, I'm like, oh, it's there. It does exist. <laughs> it's in. Yes. So, garlic goes in secondary there. A little, little chili. That's okay. That's okay. No one ever hated the chili. No. Little now, chili. we also put the pan juices from the chicken in there because that's flavor. Now we get really, really interesting. Erica, can you put enough chicken broth to come maybe like a third of the way up mm -hmm. the chicken go 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 chicken on chicken. perfect and then that's good and then we take the red peppers and the red chilies and erica toss those lemon slices those on there let's turn the heat down okay thank you and yeah let me do this oh yeah that's nice it's coming have, together pretty quick. Right? It's coming quick. So check it out, Dana. We're going to cut some green manzanilla olives in half. In half? Which way? Uh, the long way. Just to add that nice salty briny Amen. flavor. Yep. Yeah, it's perfect. And infuse the stew. Because at the end, we're going to have a broth that is like so good you want to do a shot of it. I like broth shots. That's about the only shots I'm taking <laughs> these right. days anyway. Turmeric. I'll do turmeric shots. Turmeric shots and broth Turmeric shots. and ginger. That's right. Anyone's talking about bottle service, you're talking about Pellegrino for us, yeah. right? It's about the most, the most we rock at the club. Uh, so, club City. that's right. Uh, let's make sure we got everything. We got garlic, we got peppers, we got olives, some nice lemon. Olives. Aren't they nice? Mm. They're from the, the bar. Uh, so perfect. Add those to the pot. And all we have to do is cook it for about 20 to 25 minutes. In the meantime, let's take this off the heat because it's getting a little bit too much color. We have to grate some ginger for the... Turmeric rice. You want one of the guys to stir this around for you? Or are you uh, good with this? No, I would like one of the guys to maybe make it nicer so everything's kind of tucked in there. That's now. what I was thinking. Thank you. All right, who's doing it? Who's doing it? Let's see. Let's pick someone. Um, I think Sharon and I think Brittany uh, can help them out. And Brittany's asking, do we sell out of the cookbook? We sold out of the signed copies, Brittany, but Amazon still has plenty more. Give us a couple months and we'll have more signed copies. Give the people what they want. They want signed copies. Well, we have to ship now 130 <laughs> copies out of our house. So it's creating a lot of work, but... That sounds like a Bobby problem. So you don't, you don't uh, shave it? Uh, sometimes I do, but the skin is so thin on this one, I don't care. All right. Yeah. Okay. And then check it out over here, Dan. So a little bit of ginger goes in with the onions. Now I took it off the heat because we started getting a little color there, which I didn't want. To maybe stop that and help pull out some moisture, I'm going to pinch in a little bit of salt. Erica, can you crack in some pepper? Mm -hmm. And then, here's one of the biggest tips from the recipe, is take your turmeric powder. I love this stuff because look at the color. It's like psychedelic yellow. But check it out, Dan. Now we drop it directly in the fat. Boom. Because when you do that, you bloom the essential oils in the spices, any spices, and you turn the flavor up to 10. So Erica, can you stir that around? Yes. This one. More. So it's true, guys. Anytime you have any spice, it not only blooms the uh, essential oils in there, but it also helps uh, get rid of that raw flavor. Yeah, which it melts it in stomach. really nice. Exactly. Exactly. This is stunning. Right? You got flavor bombs over here. Yeah, yeah flavor this bombs. is a flavor, flavor bomb. bombs everywhere. Everywhere, bro. We're not messing around here. Do you have to use olives? Brittany, what, uh, what do you think? No, about you, don't, you don't have to use anything you don't like. Exactly. That's the beauty of cooking for yourself. Exactly. No, if you don't like it, you don't use it. Oh, yeah, we got a little bub. A yeah. little bubble that going on here. Now check it out. We're using full fat coconut milk there, Dan. And we're going to put that in. And as soon as we do that, it 
turns a beautiful yellow color. And we're gonna cook our rice, our cauliflower rice wow. in that. So first we get the broth going, something a little saucy and juicy. Ooh. That's okay. Ooh. And then we'll throw the cauliflower rice in that. So that's why I love this recipe, which by the way, is dairy free, Whole30 approved and paleo, cause we're using the coconut. But we're just gonna reduce that a shade and then toss in the cauliflower rice. Then check this out, Dana, we finish this with lemon zest, orange zest if you want, unsweetened shredded coconut flakes, uh, nuts Sounds and so herbs. Good. It's literally a flavor bomb that's keto friendly. And it's the kind of food we have in the book that doesn't make you feel like you sacrifice flavor or anything or creativity just because you're on a diet. Those days are over, dude. Those restaurant, days are long. Restaurant quality without the, the after effects. True. The bathroom breaks after. <laughs> True, that's right. But <laughs> even that being said, what restaurant can you get this at? There's no restaurant that makes keto food like this. Oh, I'm just saying regular. Yes. Regular style. I'm like a Moroccan yes. chicken. You're going to get as much flavor without the bathroom yes. well said. Now, I wish there kind of was a restaurant. I kind of teased the idea with Dano and Erica. Like, imagine that I serve this kind of food on Grubhub or Caviar. It would go bananas. I know. The only problem is I don't have time to be in the kitchen all day doing that. So if we could train a team of cooks to make these recipes. I mean, that would be ideal, right? Oh, it would right? be amazing. It's good. Amazing. Okay, so just make sure the chicken is submerged, and then once it's reduced by half, we're good to go. And then maybe in five minutes, Erica, check it for seasoning. Maybe it needs more salt. We don't know. And then this, that we'll just amazing. reduce that for another minute, and then we'll add the cauliflower rice. And you guys, we're literally in the home stretch. We're rolling. That's it, rolling like my homies. Uh, rolling, rolling. We should grab that air fryer outside and get those. Oh, yes. Okay. Get those grilling up for you. Good idea. Wow, we're getting, yes, you're getting a two for you. You're getting a keto recipe and one of Erica's signature fried egg roll recipes. Don't forget about these bad boys. These are my favorite right now. Oh. Ah, yes. Those the will be on the blog soon. Des dessert explosion balls. <laughs> okay, so let me grab you the air fryer yeah. and you oh, keep everyone company in the meantime. All right, what's going on, Flame City fans? <laughs> So this has been awesome guys bobby's book let me tell you i this is like a keto bible here if you do not have this this is what you need to get i will tell you some of my favorite recipes i haven't had the moroccan chicken stew but we're gonna have that one tonight the mushroom chicken let me find this one for you guys my husband made this for me the other day here show him the dan biscuits too creepy <laughs> mushroom chicken with a veggie mash this is a, a third grader could make this recipe because that's about the cooking level of my husband. <laughs> it's a good advertisement. I like that. Man. And then Getting again, let's dumped on, guys. <laughs> bombs are flying everywhere. The biscuits, too. Flavor oh, wait. I'm going to show one other thing, too, before the biscuits. Check these out. Uh, so I'm all about taking foods that you love that are maybe a little bit decadent and making them better for you. Bobby did that with these crispy coconut shrimp. Mm. I mean, if you want crunch, if you want that like decadent, indulgent flavor, but not really breaking the calorie bank, this is the recipe for Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And then, hold on, I got some one more. Do it to it. I love it. Where is and the, you can just take the recipes one. and claim uh, them biscuits. as your own. Uh, oh, biscuits here, will be here. Yep. Yes, you guys, the link for Amazon is down in the description box. If you live in another country, just search Amazon in your local country. Don't use my link. All right, you guys, I'm normally not a name dropper here, but if you've been to Red Lobster and had their cheddar <laughs> biscuits and you like them, these are even better. Two net carbs per Great. biscuit. I crushed like three of them and I had no guilt. <laughs> Unbelievable. Super sure, idiot proof. And really easy to make. I made those. Dude, you, there's no way to mess it up yep. at all in, unless you can't count 20 minutes in the oven. That's the <laughs> only, literally the only way That's you can mess it up. That's what timers are for. <laughs> all right, so Dan, check it out. All right. You just put the homemade rice cauliflower in the coconut milk. And look what happens. As soon as we do that, it starts to get tied up. And then just because we put a new amount of cauliflower in here, we season. That's something we talk about in the cookbook. Seasoning at every step of the cooking process to make sure the final dish tastes perfect. Because imagine having a whole head of cauliflower without salt, bland as can be. Not for me. Right, not for me, not for people who like flavor. So just mix that up. I normally would flip it like this, but this is so stain worthy. Let's do this, Daniel. Let's go over the sink and do it. That's let's see how good I am. Let's go. Oh, let's see. Ah. There we go. All, All right. right, we're here. Hold on, I'm getting back in case, I don't know how high you're going. Oh, oh it's, it's not gonna go that high. Not going that okay. high. So far, so good. Ooh, Come that on. looks like rice. That, it doesn't look like rice? Yeah. Right? See? I, I mean, that's amazing. 
Oh, not bad. Okay, good. Bobby is feeling himself <laughs> right now. In the groove. <laughs> Steph Curry stop, baby. I'm in the groove. All right, I'm going to taste this first and see. If yes, you please can. do. Now that looks great, you guys. Excuse me? That looks Can lovely. Get I like it a lot. So is the cauliflower rice, is that good to eat? Uh, it needs to or cook. needs a few more minutes? Yeah, so here's the deal. Another tip to making this taste like a rice is not to overcook it. It already has the texture of rice, but if you make it mushy, all of a sudden, little Timmy knows it's not rice. If it's raw, it's too crunchy. Little Erica knows it's not rice. We cook it for about five to seven minutes. You can put a lid on here if you want, then check it. If it has the softness, kind of mostly removed, it's done. Check it for seasoning, pull it off. It's all about getting the raw flavor away, but not making it mushy. Okay. Now, I could actually probably check it for seasoning right now. Now I'll it's ready for broth, Sean. I need a little more salt, and oh, now it's ready. I love it. I'll see. I'm coming in. Mmm, it's great. Right. I think maybe a touch more salt. Wow. Isn't that nice? Yeah, some yeah, salt, but some wow. Salt. All right, I'm taking a bite. <laughs> Dan can do it. I'm taking Dan a bite. Dan can do it for everyone. This will be the, the every man. Oh, part. I always give away bites. <laughs> nice. <clears throat> yeah, super yummy. Here, guys. <laughs> Get in there. I'm going to be from Dubai in the house. Hello, yeah. Shaheen. Nice. That's really good. Yeah, this is awesome. We got Patricia in the house. So, guys, things, I mean, look at the colors on this. This is insane. So, Erica, we have to finish this with herbs. So let's chop some parsley. Done. Uh, let me see also what it says here in the book. We have to finish it with, oh, the coconut flakes I gotta get. So we gotta finish it. Almonds or walnuts, uh, lime zest or lemon zest, parsley and chilies. So let's get all that good parsley stuff, Erica. Here. Yep, parsley's in the door. You can show everyone my parsley hat. Nice. Oh, this is awesome. So he keeps his herbs in water, helps them stay fresh a little bit longer. I love that. Oh. Yep, you gotta keep the uh, the lid on there. So that's actually getting to the end of its life there. So, how much do we need, maybe? Oh, well, she, I don't know, yeah, something like... Okay. Yeah, let's get rid of that. I, this is over two weeks old, so as long as you that's keep it good. in fresh water that change it every few days, I'll throw that away, yeah. then it's fine. I might even have some dill we can use to the lawn. Yeah, that's gonna add some nice, some nice green color, huh? Yes, I'm all about almost the garnish. They're optional, but it does add a nice burst of freshness. Um, we're gonna do a little bit, some more of this red chili here. A lot of people ask me where I get my red finger chilies. Uh, if you live near a Latino market, they always have them, but I just get them at Whole Foods. They seem to always have them in stock, which is really nice. I like the towel move. Yeah, you got it. The have towel tucked in the, sh the shorts. That's I'm so the, messy that I need that stuff attached to my hip. So do those burn your fingers if you don't wash your hands right after? Um, Not terribly, but yeah, if you touch like your eye or something or your privates, it's going to hurt. <laughs> hey, I, it happened once. So time. don't stick your hands down your pants yes, when you're cooking dinner for guests. Yes. General rule. General rule. And I guess <laughs> if you do, then you'll pay for it and you deserve it. Though. How's this for just in terms of amount? I think that's uh, no, no perfect. Uh, as yeah. Much as, yeah, it's perfect. So we got that, let's take some. You guys choose, should we do walnuts or Ooh. almonds tonight? It's totally up to you for garnish. I know what I think. I'll lead the witness. <laughs> Give me a shake here. Rice is looking great, you guys. Absolutely phenoms. I got my twist down here, NBA final style. And then- All right, people are saying walnuts. Walnuts it is? Is that what you wanted? Nice. I love a nice walnut. I just think the texture is a little hairier. I agree. Yeah, almonds are dense. very dense. Well, Dan, oh look, we're not just using any walnuts. Don't tell Desi. These are her mom's Bulgarian walnuts Ooh. that she sends in the mail. We're going to use these. She affords these for herself, but I think it's a special occasion. You yeah, guys are hanging out. Sharing's caring, right? So let's chop off some of these. Some nice herbs here. Bulgarian orechi, we call them are so good. They're like soft and milky and creamy. Absolutely delicious. Sneak one of these guys? Yeah, you gotta sneak. You oh gotta sneak. Like, if we have people coming over, unless we really like them like you, like we'll hide them. Like if they're on the counter, it's like, no, put them away. Yeah, Bulgaria, that's a really creamy walnut. Yeah, and we keep them in the freezer because uh, it keeps them longer. It's a very volatile oil in here that can go bad pretty quickly. 
Um, and then what else is the other garnish? You can taste it. It almost tastes like a little bit of olive oil in there. Isn't that interesting? Yeah, yeah it's really so cool. fresh and milky, yeah. Well, I don't think I've ever had a walnut like this. Right? I'm just sitting over here. Yeah, shots of broth. So also Team Crunch, right? We're always thinking about ways to crunchify a recipe. Nuts are great for this. Obviously, if you don't like walnuts, you're allergic, don't use it. Use sunflower seeds. Dude, that broth is like... Let me try it. I'll try it. Again. Oh, my God. Is this, is this the official communal spoon? That's the communal spoon. <laughs> We're all using the same spoon. All right, let's see your face. I want to see the face when you taste. Oh, like snap. <laughs> that is really good, you guys. It's just like Woo! Money. Dude, look at the hand up after the taste. <laughs> is incredible. Just leave it up there. It's money. Wow. So I'm going to flip the chicken just to make sure it cooks evenly. On both sides. But at this point, you just know things are going in a good direction. Chicken's not gonna overcook because it's surrounded with moisture. So Barry Hackett just said he found your channel a few weeks ago and he, before that he never had the confidence to get in the kitchen and now he found his confidence. Really, Barry? What up, Barry? High five, Barry. Thank you, my homie. I appreciate oh. that. That's what we do. We make home cooking accessible. We do our grocery haul videos to make you more educated. So thank you so much, you guys. I really appreciate that. Um, I think this rice is done. Let's check it for seasoning. I wouldn't take a pregnant woman's yeah, snack. Yeah, Jacqueline had a nice time. <laughs> the walnuts. That's a good call. <laughs> That's good. That was a good one, Jacqueline. I like that. <laughs> Another minute on this. It's still just a shade crunchy. But wait till we start adding all the fixings in that. It's going to be a maze. So let's make sure we got herbs. We got chilies. We got nuts. Mm. Oh, coconut flakes too. Unsweetened, of course. Otherwise, they're not keto and they're a sugar bomb. And I think, Erica, the, the picture is looking pretty yeah. legit here, right? Let's let them decide. All right, so does that right there oh, yes. look like that right there? Well, yeah, the chicken's upside down. The chicken is yeah, upside chicken's down. Chicken's upside down. So, like, imagine the chicken was... We'll do another comparison at the end. Yeah, yeah. fair. Yes, we'll do another one. So we made this, I think, a few weeks ago. This is the uh, Keto Chicken Salt and Boca. I think I did it on Instagram stories. Prosciutto and sage wrapped, dipped in almond flour, served with a roasted cauliflower and Brussels sprout mash. Huge, huge flavors on that. Uh, this is my best curry chicken salad with low-carb cheesy pita breads. Really great lunch meal prep. Makes five servings. You uh, can tell you're proud of all these recipes because you're not jumping around. You're not this is the one party. you made, right? Or no? uh, yeah. Yeah, you made this one, yeah. This is the uh, dairy-free creamy chicken with mushrooms. And cauliflower broccoli mash. Dude, that, was that was not so good. good. I crave that. Yeah, plus, uh, they got they have a uh, two and a half or three year old. She's all this will be three in July. So they have a three year old girl named Aaliyah, and she can crush food like this because it's like creamy and a little salty from the Parmesan, but it's super food. So I've heard for so many families and parents that the recipes we make are kid and picky eater approved, which warms the cockles of my heart because it's a great way to get real nutrient dense foods into the bodies of kids, which is so important as opposed to sugary cereals and you know other nasty, nasty stuff. It so, tastes like mashed potatoes and they yeah. don't know it's different and it's good to get something other than mashed potatoes in them. Exactly. So like make it for your kids. Don't tell them that it's broccoli or cauliflower. They're going to love it. Absolutely love it. All right. So I think we on the right hey, hey thanks for picking this up guys <laughs> yeah, that's right that's nice of you hey it's a, it's a team effort here <laughs> okay so all right check out Anna. I gotta go I'm gonna to kill the heat on this we'll add that and then maybe we can crowdsource again maybe hey uh patricia or mira or maybe shaheen can you help dan and maybe just stir all the herbs in there that'd be lovely of you guys show you this. did it work did it work? Touch that. Damn! That's crispy as can be. Oh my god. Alright, Dan, take a break and take a look at these uh, egg rolls here. Alright, Erica just fried up. These are gluten free egg rolls. Wow. Crisp test, listen to that. Can you tell them about the uh, brown rice wrappers? Yeah, so for so long I was making my egg rolls with the egg roll wrappers that you buy at the grocery store. They're Let's full, change so that we get better, a little bit better light. There we go. They're full of wheat. They're full of not so great for you ingredients. And I, you know, Bobby's, he's been impacting me. Uh -huh. And I was determined to make a clean version. These wrappers are made of brown rice, cassava, mm -hmm. and that's it. So cool. Um, and so we were cool. able to make egg rolls. These are uh, chicken egg rolls. They have chicken, some fresh cabbage, ginger, garlic. The recipe will be on my Instagram page. Yep. Those are so crispy. It's crazy. 
I mean, Erica makes a killer traditional egg roll in the air fryer, so replacing all that fat with uh, air and a little bit of spritz of avocado oil, and they're killer. And she wasn't content with that. She's like, yo, I'm gonna up the game even more. She saw brown rice gluten-free wrappers at the store, and she made them, and her second try, you nailed it with yep. the box, right? And I wouldn't, dude, I would not sleep. The working woman over here <laughs> loves the egg rolls. Oh, dude, that she should. <laughs> Desi and baby love it. Desi is one of my inspirations because she eats primarily gluten-free, and she loves egg rolls. Yep. So I was like, I gotta do this for her before she gives birth. Threw so yeah. a little coconut yeah, on there. Yeah, but just put the coconut place in there. Now, guys, come on. Give me some, I wanna see some thumbs up. Like the video, throw some hearts in the comments if you wouldn't want this for dinner. Because I mean, this is just a colorful feast. People and kids eat with their eyes first. Dan, what are your eyes saying right now? Saying, put the camera down and start eating <laughs> That's food. right, so let's, and the chicken's done. Come back here, Dano. See how the sauce reduced? You can even pull the chicken out now and uh, reduce that even more. But for me, it's totally cool. So let's plate one dish up just to show you what it looks like. And then we're gonna have a family dinner and uh, scarf this down. So, if Man. I were to... We got egg rolls, yeah. we got chicken, Dude, we Moroccan got cauliflower food rice. Meets egg roll. Only in the kitchen of Erica and I will that kind of happen here, but hey, I'm not complaining you about it. You know what? I mean, dipping an egg roll into that sauce, I feel like <laughs> you can't really go wrong. Why not? I mean, this looks amazing. So we put down a bed of the golden cauliflower rice. I'd like rice. to get in that bed. I don't blame you. There's room for all of us, oh too. Is that Tempur-Pedic? <laughs> it's, it, that's right. And then I'm just gonna leave the camera right here. Good Actually, come back here next. I can't. Oh. Pick, I can't pick up the uh, cast iron. Camera. All right. So we we don't want to miss chicken. anything, though. All right. We'll put two chicken thighs down right there. Oh my god. And we'll take the communal spoon. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll take. This is the beauty, right? You get those oh. salty olives. You get that briny peppers. And now the lemon has done its hard work. It's infused everything. I'm going to take an extra sauce here, pour it all over the top, and then that sauce dribbles down. Done. All right, done. Now we can go back over here, Dana. All right. And then, I mean, if you want some herbs, you can do it. If you want some more zest, that's it, you guys. We are not taking our eyes off of this that. This is my number one favorite recipe from the new cookbook. I love it because it's just a flavor bomb. I mean, it's incredible. Yeah. So, I mean, that looks like it looks pretty it looks darn like close. that. Yeah, it looks pretty darn close. So, um, we're really excited about this. Uh, hop over to the Instagram stories of either me or everything Erica to see how we like it. Uh, but baby mama's hungry, so we're gonna plate up the rest of the dishes here. I can't, those egg rolls are like glistening. Yeah. In the we're distance gonna get right into now. those. Oh my god, they look unbelievable, you guys. Uh, once again, the link for the book is down below in the description box. If you haven't done so yet. Get the copy, and if you need, if you know someone in your life who needs low-carb, healthy recipes, share the link, buy a copy for them. Uh, give us about maybe a month or two, we'll have a limited, I'm talking maybe like 100 signed copies from the house. But in the meantime, just grab it on Amazon, let's make it a number one bestseller. I'm still trying to get on the Today Show to cook recipes with Al Roker. Um, but this is what you can expect, 125 recipes that look, smell, and taste like this don't make you feel like you're sacrificing any flavor because you're on a diet. So Erica, I think we did a great job. I'm, high five. I'm sold. I can't wait to eat well, this. Yeah, high five from the, high, from the viewers. Yes. High five viewers. Viewers. High five Dano. Viewers. Uh, we'll be back next week, you guys. This weekend on YouTube, two awesome review videos. Cereal, what to buy, what to avoid, and why. And down on the farm, why you need to only be eating pasture-raised chicken and chicken eggs. Uh, we had a great time. Uh, we'll be back. You'll see plenty more Erica on Instagram, on Flav City, YouTube. Check out everything Erica. 